This city is located in Europe, but does it feel like Europe? We're gonna find out in this video. Let's take a look at the modern Minsk. Minsk is the capital and the largest city of Belarus, with a population of 2 million people, making it the 11th most populous city in Europe. Minsk has a convenient location at the crossroads of Russia, Ukraine, Poland and the Baltic states. As you would expect, Minsk is the largest industrial center of the country. Unlike many other Soviet cities, Minsk was not heavily de-industrialized in the 1990s. And today about 40% of the workforce is still employed in the manufacturing sector. There are numerous tractor, automobile and diesel engine plants within the city limits. Over 70% of the produced goods are exported, mostly to Russia, making Belarus very dependent on Russia in many ways. According to Numbio, the average salary in Minsk is about $450, which may seem little, but it's way above the Belarus average of $150. The income gap between the capital city and the rest of the country is obvious. The IT industry in Belarus has grown substantially in the last decade. Minsk is one of the least expensive cities to live in. Combine that with modest salaries and good internet access and you have a very good spot for setting up an internet company. Startup culture has a very strong base in Minsk. But because Belarus still lacks a legal background for a functional venture financing of startups, the funding is usually found outside of the country. So many small projects started by local teams are oftentimes then bought by foreign investors. Good examples are Viber, Maps.me, MSQRD and Juno. Lots of people from other ex-USSR republics are surprised when they come to Minsk for the first time, because roads are of such good quality and they were not expecting to see that. Minsk has an extensive public transportation system. Buses, electric buses, trams and subway. All of them are actually manufactured locally. School children can use public transportation for free. And now they have electronic timetables at the bus stops, just like in Europe. Minsk Metro consists of two lines and 29 stations. The third one is under construction and is expected to open around 2020. 11 metro stations have public bathrooms, something you don't find in Moscow and many other cities. The people of Minsk seem to be friendly and peaceful. I never witnessed a single fight or people screaming at each other in public. Car drivers remember to stop before the pedestrian crossing. By the way, when talking to locals, if you want to be polite, remember, the country name is Belarus, not Belarusia or White Russia. Locals take it personally. Minsk has many colleges and universities, more than 200,000 students all together. There are indeed a lot of beautiful girls here, so stereotypes exist for a reason. There is no migrant workers here. Belarus has no clear policy to encourage labor migration. Moreover, bureaucratic procedures such as work permit are extremely difficult to obtain. So all the janitors, gardeners and taxi drivers in the city are local residents. Some people find this idea amazing and some call it discrimination. I don't see any problem with it and what do you think? I've come across quite a number of foreigners on the streets of Minsk. Let's see what they think about the city. You guys look like tourists. You're a tourist. Yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> How do you like it in Minsk? Love it. Just Amazing. Day, really? Way, way, way better and different to what I thought it would be. You're from UK? Ireland. Ireland. Okay. Yeah. 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 This, is, this is amazing. We've been so lucky with the weather. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. 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 Just make it a short video at the same time. Okay. okay. So, yeah. so what's your name and where do you come from? I'm Steven Sterling from Santa Barbara, California. And uh, we've been in the city for a day now. It's fantastic exploring Minsk. We had kind of no impression. This is not a city known for kind of tourism, for American tourism. And so it's very nice, streets are very clean, great condition, the architecture, fantastic. 
and we've uh, been walking around, took the metro, that was a great experience. Saw the Victory Bray, that was great as well. Uh, just had a really good time here and it impressed us, is probably the best way to, to put it. But I, I would recommend it for tourism. Prices are not bad and, you know, the amenities are there, so it's everything you need. It's got me wondering, is it comfortable for foreigners to be in Minsk? Do they speak English in Minsk? Well, let's find out. Excuse me, do you speak English? Yes, I'm trying to find a place where I can exchange some money. I have, I have American dollars, oh, I mean, local money. Oh, you can go to Shop Center, the area. Which one? Um, go ahead and okay. uh, then to the left and uh, then uh, uh, ahead. Seems like it went well. What are the advantages of living in Minsk? Bike trails. Trust me, this is a bike-friendly city. There are bike trails in many parts of town. And I'm talking about good quality lawn trails where you can actually enjoy the scenery while riding through the many green parts of the city, especially along the beautiful Svislich River. It's a green city and there's no shortage of parks here. The parks are meticulously maintained and you'll rarely find locals cutting across the grass for a shortcut. Minsk is clean, and I'm not exaggerating. The capital of Belarus has been named among the three cleanest cities in the world, according to a rating compiled by the street digital financial media company. During the Second World War, 85% of the city's buildings and entire infrastructure were destroyed, and therefore everything had to be rebuilt from scratch. So it was rebuilt at a time when cars were already a popular means of transportation. So wide roads were planned, giving Minsk an advantage over those cities built at the time when horse carriages were a conventional means of transportation. And today, the city is lucky enough to have wide roads in the very center. And traffic jams is not really a thing here. You can get from one part of Minsk to another in just 30 minutes. And you're not gonna have a problem leaving the city. Got off work on a nice summer day? Great, you'll be chilling at your dacha in the magical Belarusian countryside in no time. The city is so close to other European cities, it's just two and a half hours to get to Vilnius by train or by car. The city feels incredibly safe. Minsk is one of the safest cities of the ex-USSR countries. There's a strong police presence everywhere, especially in the center. In addition to that, President Lukashenko recently proposed to involve the military in patrolling the city streets. Considering that Minsk is such a heavily policed city, is it even possible for its residents to get together and protest and demand something? Possible, yes, but it comes with consequences. After all, Belarus is not nicknamed the last dictatorship in Europe for nothing. It comes as no surprise that young people I talked to saw no economic prospects in today's Belarus and no chances for political change in the foreseen future. Is Minsk a good place to visit? Yes. In recent years, large hotel chains such as Hilton, Marriott and Novotel have come to the city. Why do people want to go to Minsk? Well, first of all, out of curiosity and haven't heard a lot of accolades from France. What are some of the sights of the city? The central avenues of Minsk are a showcase of Stalinist architecture, including avenues designed for tank parades. The architecture is majestic and frightening at the same time. The main city street is Independence Avenue. It's a 15-kilometer long, wide road crossing Minsk from southwest to northeast, lit into Independence Square, one of the largest squares in Europe. Looming over this iconic square are massive KGB headquarters and the Neo-Romanesque Red Church. Other sites include National Academic Grand Opera and Ballet Theatre, the Gate of Minsk on Privokzalne Square, monumental towers in the style of Stalin Empire style. Surprisingly, the gambling business in Minsk is well developed. Learning that Russians banned all casinos in Moscow, Minsk did not want to miss an opportunity of getting some rich Moscow high rollers. 
and now there are as many as 30 casinos in the city. Take a walk along the Trinity Hill on this Vistlich bank, where many street musicians perform in the evening, creating an enchanting atmosphere. The Trinity Hill is the oldest surviving district of Minsk. This historic neighborhood sprawls along the left bank of the Svislich River. The National Library is quite a unique building. It's a 23-story building in the form of Rambikubogtahedron. What a word! The Palace of Independence is the residence of President Lukashenko. And to get a great view of the city, go to Hotel Belarus. They have an observation deck on top. Outside of the city, make sure you visit the Oginsky Palace. Nesvizh and Mir Palaces are great places to explore old Belarus. And great parks at the same time. You can spend a whole day in those beautiful places. Try some local Belarusian food, like potato pancakes, draniki, and some local beer. There is strict regulation on dairy products, fruit and vegetables and meat, so you can be sure the quality of the local products is good. Those who haven't been to Minsk in a while think of Minsk as a working class city where people work hard to make ends meet. While this may be partially true, people everywhere are going after material wealth and Minsk is no exception here. Today in Minsk you can see expensive sports cars and expensive urban and suburban real estate. New modern residential complexes are being built. How much is an apartment in Minsk? For example, in this apartment complex, a two-bedroom apartment will cost you $150,000. And the average price per square meter in the city is $1,200. Not exactly cheap. Nightlife is not something Minsk is famous for. After 12 p.m., most parts of the city are quiet, but you can definitely find some places to relax, drink some beer and dance, and get to know some people. Namiga Street is one of the centers of nightlife. Also, it's a good idea to walk along Zibitska Street at nighttime. It's always crowded and full of bars and happy people. After 9 p.m., it turns into a local Broadway. What are some of the downsides of Minsk? The city has a lot of large industrial enterprises and they continue to operate within the city. And the number of cars is constantly growing. So it all affects the environment. Many international brands are still not available in Minsk, such as Starbucks, Ikea, and many others. What do I think about Minsk? Minsk seemed to be a clean and a comfortable city with friendly people the kind of city that you want to come back to. And what do you guys think about Minsk? Thank you and stay tuned.